House Republicans narrowly passed their government spending bill this week, raising the debt limit on the short term in exchange for long term federal spending cuts. And with us this morning is Oklahoma's newest congressman, Josh Burkeen, to break down the latest. Congressman Burkeen, good morning and thank you for joining us. Hey, good morning. Glad to be with you. All right. So I want to start with my first question. You voted for the Limit Save Grow Act, lifting the debt ceiling and also slashing $4.8 trillion in federal spending money. What led you to vote in favor of this plan? The ability to start eating a donkey slash elephant sized problem that's been created by both parties for, you know, for the most part, the heightened spending has been in the last 40 years. And so if you look at a, a, a graph, we're headed towards in, in 10 years, 118% debt to GDP ratio by this plan. And if we hold true to it, if it uh, you know can find the agreement on the other side of the aisle, we have a chance to reduce that significantly. And uh, we have to make this a habit. This continuation of raising the debt ceiling without cuts we're headed to a place in five years where our annual debt service payments, just the interest on the debt is going to be what we spend equal to what we spend in national defense of this nation, a trillion to each. And we are on an unsustainable path. And for those of us that, uh, you know, at the head of the year, we're asking for our speaker, if he was to obtain the gavel to go back to 2022 spending levels, that was the agreement. I'm grateful to our speaker and the leadership uh, to, um, for, for bringing that about, and that's in this measure. What impact do you think that this plan that you voted yes for will have on Oklahomans? Well, uh, Oklahoma can't be healthy if America's not healthy. And so th we've got to strengthen our nation. Economic security is national security. We are a nation that is headed towards a fiscal cliff. And there's a, a European statesman who years ago said, remember, democracies cannot exist forever. They can only exist until people discover they can vote themselves largesse out of the public treasury. And we're a republic. We're not a democracy. But we've been acting like a democracy. We've had too many elected officials that have learned the game of giving away free candy without consequence to uh, without paying attention to the consequence of what it's doing to our kids and our grandkids future. And so we have taken prosperity from our from our parents and our grandparents, and we have been handing our children debt and dependency. Some of the spending cuts, they impact a few of the plans from the Biden administration. What do you tell Oklahomans that are concerned about that? Well, we this bill, this measure takes us back to the place where we were a few years ago. If it's implemented, it gives us a chance to become energy dominant again. You know, keep keep in mind that only a few years ago, we became a, a net exporter of oil the first time in 75 years because we un, unleashed American energy independence because we didn't have the, the we weren't sacrificing American prosperity on the altar of the church of nature in adherence to this radical climate ideology. And so we're clawing that back in this measure. That's a part of this bill is to unle unleash energy uh, for the American people. We're, we're looking at the potential for one of the highest home heating bills in 15 years this winter because of these these liberal ideologies that have been um, placed into policy and so this measure includes permitting reform it includes uh, work requirements it includes uh, going after the green tax credits that are are um, you know let let industry stand on its own let industry stand on its own it's time to stop uh, the American taxpayer having to subsidize things that um, you know that that can't can, can't continue absent these high heightened tax credits. And I think the American people understand that. Now, the president, he said that he will veto that bill if it passes in the Senate. What will the House do in that situation? I, I hope we stand strong. I, it is time for bold colors, not pale pastel. It's a throwback to what Reagan said, that we would have a party that standing for certain principles that wouldn't be moved and, and to, to, to take the Constitution at face value where it says that we have a mandate uh, in order to form a more perfect union, dot, 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 to secure the blessing of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. The, 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 a baby who opens its eyes and takes in its first breath of air right now owes $94,000, their share of that $31 trillion national debt. And it's not just that we've got to be concerned about. It's the unfunded obligations of the Medicare and Social Security that says within 10 years, both of those programs start hitting insolvency. And so we have got to adult in the conversation. And it is time to make the hard decisions that have been put off for all too long. 